In this video, we're taking a look at the story behind the horrifying puppy boat massacre scene in Apocalypse Now. Get on that boat! There's nothing on it, man! Get on it! All right! Including its last minute addition, some really bizarre parts that were cut out, the real event that inspired it, the strange backstory of the actors in the scene, and why this small scene is actually really important to the story. It's extreme prejudice. Are you an assassin? A soldier? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can get three years of privacy protection and a whole new library of movies to stream with Atlas VPN for only $1.83 per month. After the silly fun of the Playboy show and the medevac sequence, we get another funny bit with Chef ragging on clean while cooking soup on the boat's engine. And Lance paints his face because... So they can't see you, they're everywhere, Chief. There was another bit here that was cut out of the movie where there is a small floating bed for a dead baby, which seems to be some kind of ritual for the locals. Lance wants to keep it, but Chief yells at him before shooting it. Go, go. Oh, hey, what the fuck was that? You know they booby trapped him, things. Chief is annoyed wrangling the crew because they are like children. They're having too much fun for a war setting. And stop smoking that dope! You hear me? And that fun is about to end. Chief sees a sampan boat and insists they search it as protocol demands. Willer tells him to let the sampan go, but we've seen how seriously Chief takes his job. Chief forces Chef onto the sampan to check if they are hiding supplies for the Viet Cong. Frustrated with Chief, Chef tears apart the boat, and when he gets to a basket, a woman runs over and clean shoots her and the rest of the civilians. It turns out the woman was concerned about her puppy, showing that the situation that has been created by the war has instilled a fear that made Clean think that she must be running for a weapon to kill them with. Producer Fred Roos said, The scene where they come upon the little sampan boat, the fear of the Americans on the boat, triggers the killing that went on, and I think the truth of that scene so portrayed what that war must have been like. This disturbing sequence of events was actually suggested to Coppola by editor Walter Murch, when Coppola was back in California during December of 1976. But also, it was Walter's idea that we add to the script. It wasn't in it a kind of Miley massacre. And uh, I thought about it. I'm going back. He, he was not there. He was in California, and we had come back. And he told me, you know what, what you need is a massacre scene. And so I cooked up the, uh, the puppy Sampan as it became known. Sam Bottoms, who played Lance, implies that it was the cast that came up with the idea. So maybe it was a combination of merch and the cast. Bottoms said, Francis had us all list a set of things they wanted their characters to do, and I remember we all wanted to do a sort of Me Lai massacre. We thought an interrogation of the boat, and a firefight, and the loss of many lives. We wanted to experience something like that. In the winter of 1968, Charlie Company was losing men to an enemy they could not see or catch, the Viet Cong. Army intelligence told Charlie Company that everyone in the Vietnamese village of My Lai was a Viet Cong. They were deadly wrong. The My Lai Massacre, which happened around the same time that the movie takes place, was a war crime committed by U.S. soldiers in which they killed around 500 unarmed South Vietnamese citizens of all ages. And some of the stuff they did on top of the killing was too unspeakable to even mention here. Only one soldier was convicted and, quote, was originally given a life sentence but served three and a half years under house arrest after President Richard Nixon commuted his sentence. According to Seymour Hirsch, the journalist who uncovered the story, the military units involved had lost around 20% of their men to the Viet Cong snipers and landmines, but never saw the enemy. Over the following weeks, the units became increasingly brutal to civilians until they were ordered to go to My Lai and engage the North Vietnamese who were reportedly there for some payback. But when they arrived, drunk and stoned, they found only South Vietnamese civilians cooking breakfast. The My Lai Massacre was more directly referenced in other movies, like Casualties of War, Born on the Fourth of July, but perhaps none more so than in Platoon where the soldiers are convinced that the villagers are working with the Viet Cong and commit atrocities against them and the villages burn down. In Apocalypse Now, this scene is framed differently. We know the patrol boat crew now. We know that none of them are sociopaths who think of killing lightly. The character who ultimately kills the civilians is Clean, who shoots when he sees the woman run for the basket. Whereas Platoon says, look at how psychos take advantage. Look at what anger does. Look at how you can lose yourself. Look at the courage it takes to go against what seems like the inevitable sickness of human nature. Apocalypse Now says, 
Look at how these normal guys were snatched up and used as cannon fodder for a needless war. Look at how this boy, who should be living the life of a 17-year-old, has been turned into a killer. At least that's my interpretation. The scene was shot in mid-April of 1977. It was the second to last scene they filmed. The actors, who played the inhabitants of the Sampan, had fled Vietnam as fugitives only two days before shooting this scene, and included a lawyer and a doctor. They were desperate for money and agreed to be in the movie. Frederick Forrest said, The whole scene where we shoot up the Sampan was improvised. It flowed like music. Francis set it up so the improv really flowed. Before we started, he gave each of us something to do. For instance, I was to search the Sampan. I felt that he just thought a lot of his actors. We were gems who were to bring his ideas to life. To life. And um, he also took a lot of our creative input. Once he set that, that feel for us, we just started improvising everything that was happening on the boat. Forrest said that they just let the cameras roll. And the first take, quote, knocked everyone out. Stephen Travers writes that a scene like this was not something screenwriter John Milius would have ever included in the script, considering how ultra-patriotic his version was. But seeing as Coppola refused to give any concessions to the U.S. Department of Defense and was therefore receiving no aid from the U.S. military, he was completely untethered and free to explore this aspect of the war. It almost feels like something someone in Coppola's unique position would feel obligated to do. Forrest said, When we had finished, it was absolutely quiet. Cinematographer Vittorio Storaro was just stunned. He said it was the best scene he'd ever seen, but none of it was written down. When it turns out that the woman was running for her puppy, Lance demands Chef give it to him, and ultimately yanks the puppy away from Chef violently. Perhaps the sounds of the puppy yelping were added in later, but this was obviously too violent and I wish they hadn't done that. Lance takes the puppy through the Dolung bridge sequence, which you could say that it was a lucky charm that kept Lance from getting killed, after leaving himself open to get shot while tripping on acid. Shortly after, the puppy goes missing when Clean is killed, which could be interpreted as a loss of innocence, or maybe the puppy was added on a whim and Coppola didn't want to have to figure out how to incorporate it into the rest of the movie. And the Sampan scene and Clean's death were the last things filmed, but I'm assuming the puppy was somewhat planned because it's featured pretty heavily in the Dolung sequence. That said, when I watched the final cut version of the movie on IMAX, I noticed that the puppy reappears on the boat right before Willard leaves to go kill Kurtz. I'm pretty sure that's the puppy and not a monkey or something. I remember it being really clear on IMAX, but on the Blu-ray it's a little hard to see. What's great about the Sampan sequence is how much it progresses each character's arc in a single scene. Willard and Chief clash because it's important to Chief that he has control over his boat and his crew. He feels his job is important and has pride in fulfilling his duties by the book. He's trying to prevent chaos on the boat with his childlike crew by instilling a sense of order and protocol. Until we reach your destination, Captain, you just on for the ride. Willard's mission, while secretive, supersedes everything else, and by the end of the scene, we see how serious he is about it. I told you not to stop. Now let's go. Both of these objectives clash with Chef, whose only mission is to get the hell out of Vietnam in one piece. He has no stake in being an asset to the war effort or Willard's mission. Clean, at such a young age, doesn't seem to grasp the weight of what is happening. He seems a bit shocked at the carnage, but he is too naive to feel responsibility for it. And as expendable people are in this setting, he will be the first of the patrol boat crew to die, and we will never see who was responsible for his death. Finally, Lance, like Chef, has no sense of duty to the war effort, but while Chef is terrified and trying to claw his way out of the situation, Lance, like the surfer he is, is mostly relaxed. He'll participate, but he participates like a tourist on vacation. He paints his face for fun. In the next scene, he drops acid, and now he has just been given a symbol of his innocence, a puppy, to go through the story like himself, just going with the flow. Semi-related, there was an insane moment that was cut from the movie where the patrol boat passes by a sampan filled with monkeys and has the corpse of a man tied to the boat's sail. This is intercut with the ritual at the Kurtz compound from the end of the movie, but the people are singing Light My Fire by the doors. That's coming from where we going, Captain. It was a way we had over here of living with ourselves. We'd cut them in half with a machine gun and give them a band-aid. It was a lie. And the more I saw of them, the more I hated lies. 
On the next episode of Making Apocalypse Now, the crew of the patrol boat finally reached the Dolung Bridge, the last army outpost on the Nung River, in a surreal sequence that would mark the final point of no return for the crew and a shift in tone and visuals for the movie. Dolong Bridge was the last army outpost on the Nung River. Beyond it, there was only Kurtz. Did you know that you can stream Alien on Disney Plus in Canada or Australia, or pretty much anywhere besides the United States? We here in the States are out of luck unless you use today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. It's easy. You just click on Canada and Atlas VPN changes your IP address to make it appear that you are in Canada, and it opens you up to everything that is available in that country. And you can do this with all sorts of movies and TV shows. Atlas VPN is the best VPN deal on the market. You can get it for only $1.83 per month, plus an extra 3 months and a 30 day money back guarantee when you click the link in the description. And it doesn't just help you get movies. Atlas VPN will stop ads and malware, block malicious links, keep your Google searches hidden from trackers, and notify you when someone is trying to steal your data. And here's the best part. You can protect all of your devices on a single subscription. Grab this limited time deal now. Click the link in the description to get three years of Atlas VPN for only $1.83 per month, plus an extra three months for free. 